The GMA was supposed to withdraw emergency services at health facilities as a further step in its strike. How exactly did that go? students in Russia have caught the strike and demo fever as they threaten to protest cuts and delays in their scholarships. And congestion on the Kwame Nkrumah interchange is set to ease as two of the flyovers are open to traffic. Here at the Circle Interchange, where President John Mahama has just commissioned this new project, and already there are a lot of vehicles. And if the cameraman will just pan behind, you'll see a very long trail of vehicles who are already in the queue, ready to patronize this particular road. Stay tuned to Joy News Interactive with me, Jennifer Jane Asante. Remember, the show is sponsored by Airtel. What's great about this show is that you get to be a part of it. You can tell us what you like, what you'd want to talk about, by taking a short video or pictures of an issue of concern and then send it to us. Send it via Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash join news on TV. On Twitter, you can find us on join news on TV as well. The hashtag is JN Interactive GH. Our email address is joinnewsim at multitvworld.com. And our WhatsApp line is 0560-800-000. That's 0560-800-000. Now it's time for our Daily Strike Update. Today is the day the Ghana Medical Association served notice that its members would withdraw emergency services as a further step in its strike. The association started the strike last week with withdrawal of OPD cases. President Mahama on Wednesday said he wouldn't authorize payments outside the budget, but according to the Ghana Medical Association, it agreed with government to insert the payment of their conditions of service in the 2015-2016 budget. But what about the patients? What is it like to arrive at a hospital with an emergency when doctors are on strike? Our camera caught this sad incident at the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital. <laughs> I'm not Oh, Hey, I'm not going to All right, so you can send in your comments on all the issues we're talking about. Send it via various social media platforms, I've told you. But let me remind you about our WhatsApp number because it's the quickest way. It's 0560-800-000. That's 0560-800-000 and then 00 again. Now we have comments, but we'll get to those in a bit. The strike and demonstration fever seems to be reaching Ghanaians abroad. Scholarship holders in Russia have threatened to embark on a demonstration at the Ghana Embassy due to what they describe as undue delays in the release of stipends. The students lamented hostel fees that were once catered for by the government have been cancelled, while shipping allowance for final year students has also been reduced from 1,500 US dollars 
has been reduced to 1,500 US dollars from 3,000 US dollars. Now from this stipend, students pay for their hostel fees, their medical bills, transportation charges, utility bills, school activities, which basically are your coursework, printing, accessories, etc., clothes, and your feeding and upkeep. The students said numerous attempts through the Ghana Embassy to have their concerns addressed have proved futile. Well, we spoke to some of the students in Russia earlier. Right now, we have been warned by our hostel authorities that within two weeks, if any payment is not done, we will be evacuated from our various hostels. I'm Adams, also from the same university. It's actually bad now, seriously, and we are under so much pressure. Hostel authorities threatening us to pay our debts. It's really pathetic. I'll be very, very honest. I'm really disappointed in this government. Students have been here since April. They've not received their stipend. I mean, what kind of life is that? You don't want us to die here. Our stipends don't come. And even the $300 they pay us, it's not enough. It's not enough to feed us. It's not enough to pay for our hostel bills. It's not enough to pay for our medical bills and other utility bills. We want an increment. Seriously, the government should do something about it. We want an increment. They also sliced part of the shipping allowance they pay us from $3,000 to $2,500. I mean, how, how, how do they want us to survive? All right, so we have some comments on that. Let's start with our expensive scholarships issue. Uh, on Facebook, we put up the issue, and this is one of the universities where we have Ghanaian students on scholarship. And there are the comments. Jamal says, Mahama plus NDC equals demonstration. Demonstration star NDC equals strike. So therefore, Mahama plus NDC plus demonstration plus strike equals Yentiobia. Right. Uh, God knows Billy says, haha, they should make it a strike rather since it's a strike festival in Ghana. And Kossi says, to study for free in Russia, I won't go and not especially on so-called government scholarships where government will default and cause me embarrassment. I'm sorry, folks. Take heart, suckers on the way. Emmanuel says, hey, those studying abroad too are going on strike. What are the money told for? Okay. Kamal says, I don't blame them for their actions because no one in this world will reject a honey with credit. Okay. But ideally, we should cut our coat according to our sizes. And he's making an appeal to the president there. Roger says they should take heart. The best is yet to come. This one, please don't blame Ghana government. Fatai Salah says that's not how to pay back Ghana. They're in a foreign land. They should be careful. Demonstrations disturb public peace. Nantogma says that's their headache. And Jesse says, who say go there for school? While from school day. Okay. Right. So you can join the conversation on that on our Facebook page. Let's see what comments are coming via WhatsApp. I have a couple of comments on the doctor's strike, so let's read those. Um, this one is V.S. Kamara from Larabanga, and he says, if GMA is bargaining for next year while the strike is now, GMA is being unfair to both Ghanaians, to both government and Ghanaians. Um, this one doesn't have a name, so I'll just skip that. But Mark from Jarapa says, for doctors, I think they should all be sacked and the government needs to draw up new conditions of service and make them apply based on those conditions. Those who feel they'll get jobs outside Ghana should go ahead. Even with their presence, we're dying. So why do we continue to tolerate this? Uh, let me take one more and then we can go back to Facebook and see what comments you have on that. Um, Mahama should do the right thing at the right time to help the nation. As a matter of fact, doctors are on strike. Oh, you didn't add your name, so I won't read the rest. And I think government should cut down ministerial allowances. Right. So. Do you use the Kwame Nkrumah Circle Road? Have you heard the good news yet? President Mohammed today commissioned the first phase of the three-tier Kwame Nkrumah Circle interchange. Being the center of the national capital, the area has always experienced chaotic traffic 
with about 250,000 vehicles using the road daily. The presidents at the partial opening said that this is expected to ease traffic jams that have characterized the national capital. It will also enable the contractor to move some of the traffic onto the two flyovers and create space to concentrate on the rest of the works remaining to be done. As you can see, the third flyover is being laid out. That's this one on top here. It's being laid out with various connecting loops. Work is progressing on schedule and the Kwame Nkrumah interchange with a new statue of Osajifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, a beautiful fountain, a police post, new lorry parks, and greenery will be ready for inauguration before the middle of 2016. To further address the issue of congestion and improve capacity of the roads in other parts of the city to take the, traf the growing uh, uh, volume of traffic, we are executing a number of other projects. These include the rehabilitation of the roads within the Accra East Corridor. It is my expectation that with the completion of these roads, they will bring a lot of relief to commuters in the eastern part of Accra. Now, we've been interacting with some road users. So, off to the Kwame Nkrumah interchange area, shall we? In fact, it's, it's, it's very marvelous that the president has come to commission one of the this thing. Uh, we, all, we were all not expecting that uh, these people can complete this job as early as we thought. But since he's come to commission one of the rooms so that the vehicle can easily move, I mean, we are, we are, we are proud of that. No very problem. happy about this project because uh, formerly this place was very, very congested. But as we've been promised that this place will be, I mean, uh, done in this, uh, as we are seeing it, we are very happy now that today the president is coming to, I mean, inaugurate the first phase of the project, and everybody is happy about it. Expectation that is very wrong for this thing to be open by this time, because we because we got to notice that it's connecting from a downward circle to uh, this place to uh, 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 the, the, uh, in front of Hamburg, and then you're not finished with all the roads, you're not finished with all the four corners. So how can you open from uh, um, from circle to uh, Accra? What is not finished with the other roads? And then the reason is that I don't even understand why the political flag should be shown there. Is it for the nation or it's a political party? Uh, uh, traffic is come down, so we are sure that if we finish, all to be okay for our drivers. It's good for us because it will reduce the other traffic. Yeah, it is fine because I was coming from Achimota right now. There is a lot of traffic, but I think this one will, will help us. So what do you make of the Circle Interchange project? Let's hit our social media space for your comments. I have one from Samson in, Samson in Half Asini who says, only when we follow the Singapore route, conditions of service and salary structure should be done and not altered irrespective of the economic demand, but adjusted every year across board. This in his view would help. And then about the Circle Interchange, he asks, why the NDC flag? Hmm. Let's see what comments we have on Facebook. Nan Togma says, I thought the Circle Interchange is a national product, but why the NDC posters all over? Then what will MPP say when the Flagstaff House was commissioned? This is just to shift media attention from the doctor's strike. NDC and propaganda, hmm. Lottie Jones says, part of the Kwame Nkrumah Interchange officially open to traffic. It a be, Keke, that started a little conversation. Actually, all the comments seem to be starting conversation there. Let's go to Ibrahim, who says, I don't understand why Ghanaians must complain about the NDC flag being placed all over the commissioning area is wrong. You should know that everything in Ghana is about politics. And if it's also MPP in power, they'd have done the same thing. And he goes on. As I said, there's a conversation starting there. You can join that conversation on Facebook. Francis um, is not nice, so we shall ignore him. Kwame says... Mahama will always disgrace us. Why did he commission an uncompleted project and also allow NDC flags to be displayed while the money used was from state funds? Ah, Ghana. All right. Um, 
Kojo says, incompetent government, you people think Ghana belongs to you. Why did you put your flags up? This is a shame. Right. <laughs> Jonah, oh, it looks like people are really not happy about the NDC flag being flown at the ceremony. Jonah says, if you associated the power crisis with the NDC, why don't you want to associate a good project with the NDC? And uh, Francis, okay, Nana Kwesi has one that's interesting. He says, is the interchange built with Ghana's money or the NDC money? Again, a conversation has started there. William said, this is what the NDC is good at, sod cutting. Mills did the same when he was president. This wasn't a sod cutting. This is a commissioning of a project. It's almost done, sort of. <laughs> right. And um, Nana Kokoko is singing Still Better Ghana. He thinks the Tamale Airport is next. Angelo is also going off on the NDC banners and flags, and he thinks it's cheap propaganda. Jacob is asking, why an NDC flag? He says, I like my hammer, but I don't think that this is from him. Laurentia says, thanks to God, now things will be a little easy in the affairs of traffic release for Ghanaians. Well, finally, someone's put up something positive. And Romeo, all the way down here, says, it's open to ease traffic flow and work at the ground level. Guess you don't ply the road, huh? If you did, you'd know the sort of traffic there. Wow. Uh, uh, wow is what Lincoln is saying. Transforming Ghana, and he thinks Muhammad's the right man for the job. That has started a conversation. And he comes back to say, it surprises me a lot when people complain of the NDC flags. The project is a national issue, but ask yourself a question, who constructed it? Under which political party's regime was it constructed? Who is to commission it? So what else do you expect? And another conversation starts there. Matt Prophet says, mediocrity, why rush to open something that isn't finished? And he thinks we're spending twice the amount on opening the same thing. Christian is upset about the flags. Fatal Salah says the government is trying. Public workers should consider the government. Every sector of Ghana's economy being attended to with falling income. Ali Muhammad wants us to stop the politics and everything. And Francis is back. He thinks it's another step towards victory in 2016. Now, wouldn't you want to be a part of history? I think everybody would. And that's probably why so many drivers couldn't wait to be counted among the first to drive on the interchange. A taxi driver actually happened to be the very first one, and not only was he excited about it, but he had people scrambling all over him for the vehicle's registration number. They believe that it will bring them good luck, especially at the stakes. We see a very long trail of vehicles who are already in the queue, ready to patronize this particular road. And this actually happens to be the very first taxi that is ready to go on this road. Let's say, uh, let's see what they think. Uh, Why are you here? I am an EJP, sir. I am very happy about the road. We are grateful to the president. This road will reduce traffic build up here. How did you know it was open to traffic? I was listening to radio and I once heard it was open. As you can see here, there are a whole lot of people here who are so excited. And have a, let's have a look at this thing here. Yeah? We see this gentleman here trying to take the number of of the taxi he's writing down the number of the taxi because they think that this is a, a lotto number this is a lucky number they think because it is the first taxi that actually wanted to patronize this road they think it's a lotto number let me find out from this gentleman why he's in there uh, what's your name sir my name is nicholas lotu nicholas why are you writing down the number here because he is the first car to open the the the, 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 the overhead that they are making and when john mahama came out he came to open it fine for us so, to pass through. But if it's the first car, it doesn't mean anything. What does it mean to you? It means that it's a blessing to the nation. So what are you going to do with the number? The number, we are going to use this for Lotto number. Maybe I'll take a leaf out of his book and go use that number for something special. I'll be back in just a little while. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a Friday, so let's uh, flash back into time and see if you remember a few things. So we put this up on our wall. This is, I wonder if you remember what it is. That's right, it's a math set. And there is Akiola. This is the core maths. So we asked, did you ever use this when you were younger? Because it's a flashback Friday. And we have so many, so many comments. Um, okay, let's start with Hudugunu, who says, Akiola is the best in my option. Black Pearl says, Ajay, my enemy. Gosh, I think she's referring to the Akiola. Philosophy says, of course. Samuel Ackley says, yes, I did. And if you're through with it, review questions, then you're OK. Michael says, that's my rule. Give it to, please. Give it to me, please. OK, that's my ruler. <laughs> Give it to me, please. Charles Mensah says, yes, I used those when I was both in junior and senior high school. And I'll take the last one from Fatai Salau, who says, I did. Any good mathematician knows he or she can't do without the math set. But some math sets carry some maths formula, and as such, math sets should be properly checked during examinations. So, did you use one of those in school, Stephen? I did. I did. <laughs> I was a science student, and I even used a slide rule. Oh, I gosh. had no clue what to do with it. Sometimes you need to slide and take your head. No wonder I didn't go on to be a scientist. I tell you, <laughs> I struggled indeed. I, killed, I did. I did maths, you know, and uh, I did six form maths and biology. Uh, we were we we prided ourselves in holding carrying those big books fat around, books, and and bots, showing you know. them off. You know, you're not reading them, but they're still on your table. You know, it's crazy. Very crazy, very interesting. I mean, I don't know, but uh, school days are funny because um, sometimes we just show off with these things. I mean, my father was very particular about getting you brand new math sets maybe two days before your exam. Man. Oh, yeah. You know, so well, you, you need to have everything in do, the do set. You know? I mean? you know? <laughs> well, that's been a fun flashback Friday yeah, for Stephen, as you can tell. I know. <laughs> But that's all we have for this edition of Joy News Interactive. It was proudly brought to you by Airtel. My name is Jennifer Jane Asante. And mine, Stephen Hanty. Have a lovely weekend. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Joy News Interactive was brought to you.